Hello everybody and welcome to this new episode of Books Up Close. Hope you're all doing well, keeping healthy and reading lots. So this week we are talking about Afropean by Johnny Pitts, which came out in 2019. Afropean is a non-fiction book and a kind of travelogue really that follows Pitts, who is a photographer, a writer, a presenter, around Europe on this kind of journey to explore blackness in Europe or, as the term Afropean suggests, the relationship between Africa and Europe in their broadest senses. Afropean, as Pitts uses it, is not just an idea, and this is something he says throughout, right, it's not some kind of abstract concept, but rather the lived way in which Europe and Africa have always had an intertwined relationship. So Afropean puts a kind of emphasis on the interconnectedness of these two continents, rather than seeing Africa broadly and blackness more particularly as somehow other to Europe or Europeanness. Instead, Pitts charts a journey around Europe to think about the ways in which blackness has shaped various parts of European history and the ways in which Africa has deep roots in Europe over the past few centuries and even longer. So in this journey, he travels from Sheffield, his home, through Paris and Brussels and Amsterdam and Berlin and Stockholm and Moscow, and then eventually Marseille and the French Riviera. And this journey is a really complicated one. Pitts is very honest throughout. He's very clear in his emotional input in this story about when he feels like an outsider, when he feels uncomfortable, when he feels afraid at various moments. But alongside this personal journey, Pitts is also giving us a succinct but really in-depth history of Africa and Europe intertwined. I learned more about various European countries and cities in this book than I've done in any other kind of documentary or book. So even though you've only got these small chapters on each city, Pitts crams in so much history, culture, politics, sociology, that you really get not only his point of view, but also this much wider context. For instance, when he's in Paris, he goes on a walking tour of Black Paris, and one of the other guests is a, uh, an African-American couple who go along with him and they have a very different relationship to the blackness of Paris than Pitts does, for example, which is different again from the woman who leads the tour who has lived in Paris for a really long time. And the conversations between them all really open up different cracks and fissures in what blackness means, what representation means, what history means for these different people. While in Paris, he meets up with the author Carol Phillips, who is an author he says that he came to later in life. And this is an interesting kind of thread that runs through the book that Pitts was far more aware of the kind of African-American literary tradition, so Toni Morrison, James Baldwin, Richard Wright, for example, than British and European authors like Phillips. And that's just one kind of thread of his storyline that runs through this book. And it's no surprise that the last chapter when he gets to uh, the French Riviera, he goes to Baldwin's house, right? This kind of disused, run-down house, and he kind of breaks through the fence to, to see it. So it's almost kind of like a pilgrimage of sorts and I think Pitts continues some of the legacies of Baldwin's work, thinking about belonging, identity, what it means to be an insider or an outsider, what it means to fit into a society and be part of it. There are other chapters where Pitts goes to Berlin and finds himself caught up in a big Antifa protest and march, which turns really scary and threatening. At one point, he is surrounded by skinheads clad in black, and he's like, oh no, this is, you know, a kind of neo-Nazi rally, but actually he finds out the nuances and differences between Antifa and the neo-Nazis, um, the different uses of tattoos and clothing and ways of holding oneself. And he's really let in on this quite different way of viewing politics, resistance, and so on. Um, there's another chapter in Moscow, which is really interesting, but really terrifying. He's walking down a road at one point on his own. He realizes no one else is around and a van kind of drives past him and then stops and just waits. And he kind of turns around and kind of runs off and the van starts to follow him, but he kind of gets away. But there are loads of statistics in that chapter about the ways in which um, black peoples and African peoples in particular are kind of vanished in Moscow that um, certain criminal gangs abduct and murder various black people in the city. There's a really, really terrifying moment in that chapter. You really kind of feel your heart and kind of chest clenching as you read it. In short, this book gives us a potted 
but nonetheless very rich and deep history of contemporary Europe as it stands today. Pitts is fantastic of moving between the personal and the political, the individual and the social. He thinks about migration and immigration, about homelessness, about belonging, about language even, what it means to be part of a city or part of a nation or even part of a continent and how race and gender and other identity markers kind of feed into that. For this reason, I'm giving this book five out of five, definitely. There are moments where I really felt that Pitts could have pushed his personal narrative a bit more, told us more about how he felt in relationship to certain things that happened, but that's a very kind of minor quibble and it's a real masterful kind of book anyway, where he balances all of these different kinds of writing styles. So that's not a massive critique, but there are moments when I'm like, oh, I definitely want to hear more about that. But in general, you will fly through this book, you will make notes, you will stick post-its in it, you will look things up. This is a really great entry point into thinking about Black Europe in ways you've never had before. So when the book ends, um, Pitts talks about the bricolage of blackness that he has explored and painted in this book. And I think that's such an interesting way of talking about the variety of ways in which Africa and Europe have overlapped. And Pitts' book is the first kind of step into that world, for me at least, and maybe for you also. So I do suggest you go and get it. As ever, please like this video, please subscribe, click the bell for notifications, share it with friends, and please leave comments underneath. I really wanna know if you've read this book before, if you haven't read it, what other things you're reading, do let me know. Until next time, look after yourselves and each other, stay healthy, stay well, and see you soon.